Welcome to crankbait season, boys. Absolute naughty time. The summer sun is here. You can't even see it because it's, it's blaring up the camera. But that means hot water and summer fish, fish getting offshore. And what we're going to do today, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I go on Tackle Warehouse and I'm like, all right, I want to buy some new crankbaits. I want to stock up for the season. But one thing that's really tricky with crankbaits is they all have kind of a unique action. Like they all go chicka chicka, but some go chicka chicka, some go wonka wonka, some go some go whoa, 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 whoa. So they all have a different profile and until you buy one, you, you really don't know what it is. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna try to help you pre-buy your crankbaits because you know what you need for action in crankbaits. So I'm gonna tell you what my experience is and show you kind of a deep dive into my crankbait box, the ones I prefer, when I prefer them, kind of their, their crankbait profile and what I use them for situationally. So hit that like and subscribe button. Everybody say hi to Pink Bog. I got them that cooling vest. You looking good. Let's deep dive into deep divers. That is a fat mama jam. Let's get these jokers out. I keep my stuff organized in two different boxes. This is 20 plus de like depth divers, my, my really big mondo crankbaits. And then I have stuff that dives in another big box right here. This is kind of like 6XD style, 15, maybe 12, um, down to 20, kind of that 15 to 20 kind of range. And you're gonna laugh because I got a lot, but there's a very, legitimate, rational, I like to buy tackle reason for that. So I wanna give you guys two tips before we dive deep into these crankbait actions, where they apply and how you pick the perfect crankbait for your situation. Number one, and in a standard operating procedure, use the lightest line possible, light line. And there's two reasons, castability, and depth, that, that's the biggest thing. These crankbaits are all about the depth you can hit and that lighter line is a lower diameter so it allows that bait to get down there a little bit deeper. And then the other sneaky trick that I use and I've told you guys this a million times but a lot of you guys question it, is using a clip. That right there is an owner hyper weld clip. Now, it is kind of old school in the sense of using kind of a, a clip or an attachment to put your crankbaits on, but what I really like about this thing is it allows me to switch crankbaits very quickly. You can see I have a million crankbaits and actually each one of them has their place. You can see the bills are all screwed up on them because I throw all of them. So I'm switching out crankbaits a lot because the different actions really provide a different look for the fish or maybe a different depth. They all have something to kind of bring to the table. And by using that clip right there, I can switch out crankbaits super duper fast. I think it also kind of keeps the nose down a little bit because it's a little added weight. So they dive just a hair deeper. I might be crazy, but that's just me. We've never had a problem with this. The 49 pounds we caught crankbait fishing, actually every single fish we caught was on that that clip right there and even my, my biggest fish i've ever caught that that 13 4 i think it was i was using the clip i think i used the 44 or the 60 pound i divide my crankbaits up into two different ways and then another two different ways and we're going to go through each so the first off is 15 to 20 and then 20 plus. Sometimes this is like 14 and that. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna throw it in 12 foot of water because a lot of times you wanna you want your crankbait to dive deeper than the stuff you're actually fishing because the whole key with, with crankbait fishing, especially like offshore summer fishing, is bottom contact. It's not fishing for suspended fish. You're not using it to, to hit a certain depth column and then running it at that depth column. You are literally grinding the bottom like a bulldozer. The other way I divide these guys up is two different styles and I don't have them separated in the box but I have what I would call my aggressive crankbaits larger body bigger bill they have a very aggressive kind of shimmy to them and then I have my more subtle stuff even though this thing is gigantic it has a very soft tight kind of wobble so that's kind of the trick. Early kind of summer, early offshore fish, I wanna use more of those aggressive sort of quickly diving, like very much uh, chattering back and forth, almost like a really aggressive chatterbait. You know, very tight shimmy, very 
grind you to the bottom a very hard dive but as you get later in the season those fish actually at least on like the tba gunnersville you know these highly pressured tennessee river lakes they will literally run from a crankbait like that that's when you turn over to say you know like a rapala you know something that that has that skinnier body puts off more of a flat-sided style crankbait action you know a softer shimmy a softer vibration you can really feel it in your rod tip when you're actually fishing them 15 to 20 standard classic still catches fish i have no idea why because it just it's one of those things everyone has them in their box but it continues to work just as good as it did when like kevin van dam actually caught him out here on what was it pickwick or gunnersville and that's a 6xd i'm not going to spend much time on it because it's super standard you can go to a silent um this one actually has a rattle if you're going to buy one it's green gizzard shad like if your water's semi-stained clear what well, i don't even care dude even if you don't have shad Green gizzard chat. That that that's the one. So if you're gonna start doing this, grab a 6XD and start slaying. Uh, with 12 pound tests, you can hit about 15 to 17, 15 to 16. Um, I love this thing. This is the Six Sense um, Cloud 15. We're gonna talk about the bigger one as well. This is the epitome of an aggressive crankbait. You can see that bill is just chawed out. Um, this thing will actually dive like down to like 18, 19 feet needle cranking, even on 12 pound tests. I can get it way down there. You are going to feel this on the end of your rod. It has a very aggressive sort of bulldozing kind of dive but it also gets down very quick I like this early season another thing I like about this thing is it comes with very good hooks on it a lot of these crankbait, crankbaits come with crab hooks and you have to put on like triple grips or something like that you know you have to re-hardware the crankbaits this one out of the package comes ready to rock and roll I will warn you on both the 6xds and this one sometimes you do have to tune them it's an absolute headache you spend 15 bucks on a bait and it runs sideways but it's not that hard to tune them always do less rather than more another one kind of moving on to the more subtle crankbaits for that depth range this is a new one for me uh, and I gotta send a shout out to my boy Alex Rudd I've had a bunch of people tell me about this but until I saw Alex actually just waylay them out here on Gunnersville on it I don't like it like <laughs> I'm not gonna lie it's the Berkeley dredger this is actually an awesome color I forget what it's called but it's got like that cool purple back and then it's got a little short truce a little yellow it, it's a perfect kind of look for the for shad imitators whitefish little minnows and stuff like that why do I not like it it's not because it doesn't catch fish because this thing catches fish the reason I don't like it is you don't get a lot of report, but that's also the value to it. The dredger, even though it looks like it doesn't dive that deep, gets down there. It's a smaller profile bait with a very subtle action, a very tight shimmy to it, and it, you can even feel it on the end of the rod. It doesn't really feel like it's going back and forth. It just You get a slight little whir to kind of your rod tip and to the feel of the rod, but that's where the value comes in. It's a more subtle presentation as well as a downsized presentation, and what's really cool is you can present. I'm going to show you in a second. Well, we'll just jump to it now. So this is an example. This is the 25.5. This thing will dive 25 feet plus once again in comparison to say an 8xd or even actually let's grab a 10xd that's a 10xd that's a dredger the size difference and the bill difference is nuts but what the dredger actually does is it has that sort of flat top to it so in a sense it's a lot like the um the timmy horton crankbaits that i'm going to show you it uses the bill as well as the shape of the crankbait to create sort of a build diving sort of a uh, plane so when the water hits the bill it's diving but also when it hits that head it's pressing against the head and causing it to dive deeper so basically they get more out of less very good choice for a little more subtle, maybe a clear water situation, pressured fish. Definitely does not have the report on the end of the rod that you're gonna get from some of these other baits, but they bite it, dude. And it allows you to present a smaller, more compact presentation down just as deep as some of these bigger crankbaits. Another one in that class of, of subtle baits, and it has the same sort of physics, I guess, or aqua physics as um, the dredger, and that's the Profound Outdoors crankbait. Uh, I met Timmy Horton for the first time the other day, hanging out with uh, Nathan Martin at Seaclear Power. You want to talk about a cool down-to-earth dude. You know, a lot of these guys that, that fish on the elite level, fish on the pro level, some of them get a little like big in the head and uh, you know I, I'm not a huge fan of that 
dude, Timmy is such a down-to-earth cool dude. I had so much fun hanging out with him, and he makes a killer bait, and it's made perfectly for doing some of this deep offshore crankbait fishing because he has such a, a vast experience of it, fishing on Pickwick, fishing on the TVA. So what's cool about the Profound Outdoors, um, the Z-Boss, basically it integrates that same concept. So the bill and the head are both sort of flat planes, creating sort of a, an extended bill that allows the bait to dive deeper but keeps the bait smaller or more compact. You get a very subtle action with this. Once again, one part of it I don't like is that you don't get the report that you'll get with say a 6XD um, with that crush, but you, you get down there and these fish respond to it because it's more subtle, it's not as obtrusive, it's not as, as aggressive, um, but you can get down there and, and dude, it catches them. It got some very good but simple colors, comes with really good hardware. I, I really like this bait for when those fish get kind of irky with your, your more aggressive crankbaits. The last one is super standard and, and I love some of the new colors they come out with and that's the Rapala DT series. Mainly I fish the DT16 and DT20 um, depending on where you're fishing offshore. Offshore might be 12 foot, might be 10 foot. You can play with the DT10, DT12. Always remember though you want to over dive. So you want to dive two to four feet maybe deeper than, than what your actual bottom is. Otherwise you're only hitting the bottom for a very minimal amount of time and the longer bottom contact you get the more likely you are to catch a fish because you're in that strike zone more uh, more consistently it's subtle because of the width of the body this very much reminds me of a flat sided crankbait almost or a shad wrap style crankbait it's very slender body um, the bill even though it looks fairly wide it still creates a fairly tight wobble. It's not as tight as say the dredger or the, the profound outdoors, um, but it's still pretty tight and, and subtle. Yeah, you'll feel it on your rod tip. It, it has a little wider kick to it maybe than those other baits, but it's not, you know, you put on this crush and dude, I'm telling you, you'll feel like you got a bulldozer on the end of your bait. And that's a good way to kind of judge these crankbaits. This guy, you put it on and, it, and it's just woo, 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 woo just kind of a whir kind of a feel. But this is a, a really cool color. It's got that sort of turquoise iridescent, um, looks like a shad, and in the sun, you get a very cool reflective pattern. So when the water gets clear during the summer, it's a perfect match for those bait fish. One other tip I wanna throw you before we move on to our, our bigger deep diving crankbaits, like ultra deep, like 20 plus. One thing that I will do with crankbaits from time to time, it's always hard to know whether these fish are eating brim or whether they're eating shad or panfish or shad. And sometimes I keep a permanent marker in the boat with me, whether it's for maybe coloring line or, or making a little modification to a bait. But a lot of times I've done it with spoons. Um, I'll do it even with like, say I got a, a jig head and, and I want it to be darker instead of white and all I got is a white jig head. I can make a quick modification. One thing I'll do with crankbaits is I will actually put bar on the side of them and it seems super simple and super stupid but it's something that I learned in Florida where these fish they seem to respond I don't know if it breaks up the pattern so because this bait is just going right by them really quick I don't know if it creates more of a silhouette because there's a little bit of black on there there's a little bit of darkness or if it looks a little bit more like a brim or maybe even out here like a white bass you know because it's got the bars on the side I don't know what it is, but from time to time, play with it. If you're on some fish, you're catching them on a crankbait, and maybe they shut off, grab that permanent marker and draw some lines on it. Because here's the real cool part. When you go home, grab a little bottle of alcohol, like isopropyl rubbing alcohol, and literally those marks will come right off. Or if you just keep it on the crankbait after a while, they'll actually wear out. But you can literally kind of transform your crankbait and then transform it back, make a quick color modification, almost like using dipping glow or something like that and it does make a difference. Seems really stupid, and you guys know, like, I don't like stupid, I don't like gimmicks, it works. So let's move on to some of our deeper stuff. Um, these are sort of the headbanger crankbaits. Um, I have ones that are more subtle, but the reality is whenever you have a crankbait that dives 20, 25, 26 feet, it's gonna go chugga chugga. So you need a little bit heavier rod. If you're just getting started in this, what I always like to recommend is grab a rod from like Walmart, grab a flipping stick, like a seven six heavy action. Cause usually the rods from Walmart are a little bit lower end sort of quality or lower end grade. So they have a little more moderate action. I like, I have the oldest freaking rod in the book. This is an old Powell Max 3D. I've had this thing got like seven years and caught 49 pounds on it, caught giant fish on it. 
I like the action on it. This is actually a composite graphite rod. Um, it has a very sort of moderate tapered action, but it does really good bottom transmission. That's why I don't recommend a fiberglass rod. Fiberglass rods, although you'll land every fish you ever hook, they have a very mushy sort of feel to them, and rarely do you actually feel the bottom. It doesn't transmit the bottom, and a lot of times it's very important to understand what you're fishing with these crankbaits because you want hard bottom. You want to be bouncing off of things, whether it's shell, rock, stumps. You need that transmission because it also, it also influences how you fish the crankbait if the crankbait's over diving and and really grinding into that stuff you might need to slow down you might need to raise your rod tip a little bit there's different modifications you can use but you need the information about the bottom and about where you're fishing in order to do that and the rod is your first point of sort of connection with that onto our deeper stuff so there's two sort of mid ultra deep baits that i really like to use one is super classic not going to spend a lot of time on it that's an 8xd this thing continues to work just like the 6xd just like the 10xd what's interesting about the 8xd out of the entire xd series this is the most subtle action crankbait they make um, Strike King's 10XD is a bulldozer. The 6XD isn't a bulldozer, but it has a, a very lipless crankbait report, a very, you can feel it kind of jig, shaking back and forth. You know, you, you get a lot of transmission from it. The 8XD has a much softer action, a much more rolling back and forth action, but it dives to say like 22, 19, depending if you're running on 10 or 12 pound test. So it's a good medium ultra deep crankbait, and it has a little bit bigger profile. So especially for those earlier fish, you can show them something a little more subtle but it gets way down there it comes with pretty good hardware too the equivalent to that on the other side is is one that i really like to throw once again out of the crush or out of the cloud series um this is the six cents cloud uh, i think this is the 20 uh, so you have the 15 that i throw the 20 and the 25 so the 15 bulldozer <laughs> 25 absolute giant five ton truck bulldozer like the thing just oh, it just buries itself dude this guy is much more subtle much like the 8xd even though the bill is kind of the same design um i don't know what does it but literally if you pick them up and throw them side by side you'll know exactly what i'm talking about immediately gets down to say 19 to 22 once again but just has a little different look down there the bills are slightly different body shape is slightly different 8xd is a little bit thinner body whereas this is a little bit wider i still consider this a little more aggressive um just because the body's wider and you get a little more of a roll and not only do you get the back and forth but you get a bit of a roll so it's a little more aggressive some cool color patterns so I gotta throw this to six cents. The, the 8XDs, this is the shizzle. A, a very cool pattern, but dude, the, the six cents have some naughty patterns. You get like some blue in there, black back, chartreuse belly, pearl side with a little bit of iridescence. Some very cool colors and a very good price point. So aggressive wise. This is the the crushed or the Cloud925. Uh, it's super aggressive, dude, but gets down there. What's really cool, this is sort of the the twin brother of the 10XD. Both super duper aggressive. What's nice about the, the Cloud925 is it gets down, I'd say 25 plus. On 12 pound test, I can get this down to like 26, 27 feet, dude, like needle cranking. Um, it's super aggressive, more aggressive than a 10XD and it gets down faster. Um, there's a little bit of a curl in the bill right there, and the bill, look at the bill on that thing, dude, is absolutely gigantic. They're both pretty big. This one, because I think the end is a little bit wider, it's able to dive down a little bit quicker, but both of them still catch fish. The 10XD is still one of the absolute standards. I don't care if I'm in Gunnersville, Florida, or wherever. If you got big fish and they're ultra deep, this thing catches them because it's all about a reaction and there's something about the way this thing shimmies and vibrates that absolutely drives them nuts. This guy though, if you want something even more aggressive and dives a little bit deeper, a little bit quicker, say you got current, like we're out here on Gunnersville, water's moving, you need that bait to get down as soon as you start cranking it, this might be something to look at. A new addition to my arsenal and um, I got to thank Spencer Shuffield because I was watching the, let's see, the MLF live out here on Gunnersville and he was literally cleaning up on this crankbait so i'm like dude i gotta get one i gotta try it you know it just came out i believe um this is the bullet crank by yozuri um this is if you look on tackle warehouse, i'll put links to all this stuff on tackle warehouse it's actually under the dual hardcore um branding dude the colors on these things are absolutely sick 
like just so pretty. I actually lost one that was even cooler than this, dude. Oh, uh, quick story. I was out with my buddy Jacob Wall. I hooked what's probably like a 30 to 50 pound freaking flathead catfish and couldn't do anything. And it had this bait, dude. But it was gigantic. It is what it is. This thing dives crazy deep. So it'll get down there to 25, 26 maybe if you kneel crank. It has a very, very unique action. Out of all these baits, this one is probably the most different action. You can either like it or hate it. And I think that's what the fish do. They like it or they hate it. Because it has that big spoon bill like that, it has a much wider gate when it when it's going back and forth. A lot of these baits are just shimmying or real tight or they're, you know, flapping a little bit this one reminds me a lot of like that bagley square bill that old school kind of wake bait where it goes back and forth almost doing like a, a walk the dog or an s it's a very wide gate to it and a very different action it also gets down super quick because of the way that bill is formed it's also a big bait it comes in at two ounces so you can slang this thing i like it but it's very situational if i have aggressive fish very deep I like it. I can mix it in with my 10XD or my Crush 20 or my Cloud 25, um, and, and it's definitely a different look and a different body profile. Has a little more elongated kind of ovalesque body. Very cool bait. Actually, very decent price point for a, for a monster crank. So the last one we're gonna do, or the last two, um, we kind of touched on the dredger already. This is the dredger 25.5. Out of all these deeper 25, 23 plus divers, this is the smallest body profile and the tightest action. It, it doesn't look like, so look at the Profound Outdoors bill versus this one. This dives a hair deeper, but this thing gets down there even with that little bill, and that has to do with that head design. The dredger is just a subtle, smaller presentation, but that bill incorporates with the body and allows it to dive deep down. It's a killer presentation if you got clear water, pressured fish, but it still gets you deep. And then, of course, I have the Profound Outdoors. This is Timmy Horton's biggest bait. This is the 25. It's got a giant bill, but don't let that deceive you. Even though it's it's a rock, a brick to launch, you can throw it a mile. It has a very subtle sort of dancing action. It's not very wide, but not very tight, but it's soft. Like it, it's hard to explain, but when you're cranking it down there versus say a Crush 20 or a Cloud 25, it doesn't have that bulldozer effect on your rod tip or your rod, but it uses that, that integrated bill body flat spot in order to dive this single hit 27 feet dude needle cranking on 12 pound test you got to be careful when you slang it because that's the lighter line you don't want to slang it off your rod you got to be a little little tentative but you can get way down there and present a bait that's bulky but more subtle from an action standpoint to those bass hope you guys enjoyed these profiles if you got any questions about any of these crankbaits hit me up i don't know everything but i do have a million crankbaits and i fished every single one of them some i like more than others some i like for certain situations more than others but grab yourself some deep diving crankbaits figure out kind of what your juice depth is for offshore fishing and, and grab what you think will work if you need a more subtle action a more aggressive action but try it dude a crankbait bite is absolutely killer and oftentimes if they'll bite a crank there's a few of them there and you can catch a bunch tight lines guys hit that like and subscribe button we'll see you back out on the water either catching fish or talking lures Thank you